I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to start where lots of people start with their first Logic project, which is to want to program a beat. Now, obviously beats come in lots of different shapes and sizes, in different genres, and so what we're going to do in this video is just begin to familiarise ourselves with some of the techniques that we can use if we want to start a new project with a new beat. So what we're going to do within Logic is to see firstly how we might set up a drum kit ready to use uh, for this first beat of ours. And there are a couple of ways in which we can do this. You can see that what I've done so far is to create what's called a software instrument. And at the moment, there is no actual instrument assigned to it. So if I play notes on my keyboard, nothing happens because there's no instrument hearing the notes that I'm playing. I can load uh, an instrument directly from within the library by choosing one of the instruments from here. Or if I prefer, what I can do is to close the library down and actually assign an instrument directly into a slot here right up at the top where I get to choose the software instrument plugin that I'm going to use on this particular track. Now, if I do this, I can drop down through the list of um, options available to me. And towards the bottom, what I'm going to do is to find uh, Logic's drum machine, which is called Ultra beat. So this allows me to just load the interface directly here and the instrument's now set up ready for playing. And if I choose Ultra Beat, what I can then do is to come and find the kit that I might want to use. If I click at the top, um, what I can do is to scroll down to the drum kit and you can see that there are lots and lots of these available in different genres. And towards the bottom, what I'm going to find is uh, this uh, kit here, the Nouveau Disco kit, which is the one that I'm going to load. And straight away, what I've now got is a collection of sounds with which I can work. Now, when you're programming for drum kits, you've got a number of different choices. What you can obviously firstly do is to play a pattern in, triggering notes from your keyboard, and a good way to uh, program a beat is actually just to play the notes in that you want. Alternatively, we can draw them with a pencil tool. We can create a sequence and actually place the notes in the grid slots where we want them to go or we could create a pattern sequence. And what that allows us to do is actually create a sort of pattern in real time, building it up um, using uh, Logic's pattern sequencer. And we're gonna see all three of those approaches right now. So let's look at the first of those three options, a real time recording. What this allows me to do is to actually play the pattern in, in real time as uh, I want it to go down. I can sort of practice the pattern that I want to play and then I can engage the metronome and just literally play it in time with Logic's click track. Let's try that first. So if I wanted to play this pattern, I can obviously audition it from the keyboard and then when I'm ready, I can make a recording. And then when I'm done, I can press stop, come back to the beginning and press play. Okay, so I've got two bars of that and that's sounding absolutely fine. But because I recorded this pattern live, inevitably there were going to be little sort of timing discrepancies in that performance. And one thing that's a really useful tool to get used to working with if you're actually programming beats in real time is Quantize. Quantize takes the notes that we've played and it places them directly onto the grid so that they play back exactly in time. And I can find Quantize up here by simply clicking on the region to select it, coming across to Quantize and then selecting one over 16. And what this will do is to move every single note to the nearest 16th note and that should tidy up any discrepancies in my performance. And of course one thing I could then do having created this two bar region would be to loop it so that it just plays round and round and round. So the first way that we program the beat is to create a two bar real time recording. We've quantized it so that it's absolutely in time and we've learned how to loop it so that it plays uh, over and over again and we can build a track around that beat that we've programmed. So that's the first way. But the second way that we can actually create a pattern of our own is to use Logic's pencil tool. If I press T, what I have a chance to do is to go and find the pencil tool, which is the second tool down here within uh, Logic's toolbar. And by pressing on the pencil tool, you can then see that my cursor has been replaced with a pencil. And if I then click here, what I then am in a position to do is to create a sequence the length of my choice. So I could keep going and make a nice long sequence, or I could just limit myself to two bars as I did with my real time recording. And then when I double click on this sequence, I can see the inside of it. And straight away, what this does is to launch Logic's piano roll display. You can see it's named here. And what we can then see is all of the individual drum kit pieces for this Ultra Beat kit, which are sitting next to all of these um, uh, note names. I can see that the wood kick is on C1. I can trigger it simply by playing it here. 
and I can equally audition my snare drum or any other sound that I might want to program or work with. So that allows me to just sort of audition the sounds, but in terms of actually sort of programming for them, what I can then do within the piano roll display is again to press T and again find the pencil tool. I want to draw individual notes. And the way that this works is having selected the pencil tool, I can then create a note wherever I want a note to go. So for instance, I can build a pattern in an offline, non-real-time way by, let's say, maybe starting with a kick drum on the first downbeat. By doing this, you can see that a note is created. And what I could also do would be to put a cycle around this two bar sequence so that as I start building my beat, I can do that by simply adding one note after another. Okay, so my pattern's starting to come together and I can use other tools within the piano roll display to actually speed up the process of programming this beat. For instance, I could decide that I want to use this same closed hi-hat pattern in bar three that I'm using in bar two. And I could do that by selecting T again, coming back to the pencil tool, selecting all of these notes, and then holding down option to simply copy them into the next bar. And it doesn't matter if I move these notes up or down, so long as I put them back on the same note uh, when it comes to actually placing them on bar three, then of course they'll work out nicely that way. And another thing that I can do, which is really useful for beat programming, is to, I could actually just throw away all of this um, hi-hat pattern altogether, and instead what I could do would be to select Logic's brush tool, which is here. And what this allows me to do is to create running sequences of notes simply by just dragging out over the notes where I want them to go. And what I could then do would be to create a running sequence of 16th notes for this closed hi-hat, which will obviously then change the feel of my pattern altogether. And one of the advantages of working with the brush tool is if you then work in combination with the pointer tool as well, it's very easy to go through and just punch a few little holes in this rhythm in a couple of spots so you're sort of personalizing the way that the pattern's gonna play back. I'm just gonna take out a few hits here or there and that now sounds like this. Okay, it's worth bearing in mind that, of course, what we're doing here is we're interacting in two ways. What we've got is all of these little MIDI notes, and what they're doing is to trigger the sounds within Ultrabeat. So, of course, there are things I can change within Ultrabeat as well, which are going to allow me to sort of change how the feel of this sound works. If I open up the Ultrabeat interface, what we'll see as the pattern plays back is we'll see those notes sort of triggering their sounds within Ultrabeat. And what I can see is that the closed hat sound, which is here, being triggered by this note right here, I can see firstly um, its volume. Its volume is shown by the sort of blue bar, this sort of display here. And if I wanted to make that hi-hat quieter, what I can do is to click on the right hand edge of it and simply adjust its volume down. And over to the right hand side, I've also got a pan dial for this sound, which is going to allow me to choose whether or not the sound plays back from the left hand side, the right hand side, or a balanced position right in the middle. So now we've looked at two ways in which we can program beats within Logic. We've looked at a real-time recording, and we've used the pencil tool to work with the piano roll display to create notes simply by programming one hit after another, noticing that the brush tool is a really useful way of being able to create running sequences. But the third and final way we're going to look at programming a beat is by using the step sequencer. I'm gonna throw this sequence away by selecting the pointer tool and simply uh, deleting that little sequence. And instead what I'm going to do now is to use the control uh, button hold this down and simply create 
uh, a pattern region by clicking on this second option here from the pop-up menu that appears. Now, what this is going to do is to create a four bar sequence, which then lets me work with Logic's step sequencer. And what this lets me do, a bit like the um, pencil tool uh, version of programming, is to create a sequence for my drum part instead of just going through uh, one note at a time within the piano roll display. So let's have a look at working this way instead. Again, I'm going to put a loop around the sequence. And what you'll see is that whilst it's currently four bars long, I'm only actually looking at 16 steps for my sequence. In other words, as I create bar one of 16 steps, that's going to be repeated by Logic automatically into bars two, three, and four as well. So a bit like the piano roll display, what I have a chance to do now is to press play and build my pattern using these individual steps. Now, you can see that it works very intuitively having all of these sounds mapped out in this way. And if I decided that what I wanted to do is to actually get rid of an individual hit, I can simply just click on it a second time to get rid of it. So if I've got second thoughts about this conga part uh, that I've added, then of course, it's very easy for me simply just to click on those individual hits. Now, part of the reason why the step sequence is so intuitive is because what I want to do now is to sort of think about a second bar to this pattern rather than just one. What if I wanted there to be some variation in bar two that's different from bar one. Well, up in the top right hand corner, I can change 16 steps to 32. And instantly what will happen is that those first 16 steps that I programmed will now be duplicated uh, in the second 16 steps to take me up to 32. And what that then means is that I can create different patterns here, different rhythms, maybe changing out the hi-hat part, uh, and uh, changing the way that that pattern works and potentially even a little bit of sort of snare variation as well. And very quickly what I've now done is to take one bar of loop and turn it into two. And that's working nicely. So within this video, we've looked at three ways that we can program our first beat in Logic. Firstly, we can choose an instrument, either from the library or assigning UltraBeat to a new software instrument track. We've learned that we can record beats in real time by triggering individual hits from our keyboard. We can use the pencil tool, and what that allows us to do is to work with Logic's piano roll display to place notes into a grid sequence. And we've also worked with a step sequencer, which allows us to build very intuitive beats very quickly, potentially taking a one bar sequence and expanding it quickly to two or even four if we like.